Hello and thanks for visiting our website, rebuilderinabox.com. Today we're going to be rebuilding the 6G alternator prevalent in Ford since the year 2000. 6G alternator is easily recognizable by the gray plastic bearing cover on the back. There are two different sizes, the 135 amp and the 105 to 110 amp. You can tell which one you have by measuring from the center of one through bolt to the next and on the larger amp, the 135 amp, the measurement from the center to center will be approximately five and a quarter inches. On the smaller one, the measurement will be four and three quarters. <coughs> on the smaller alternator, there are two different versions, the 105 and the 110. If you look in the side, in this area right here, you'll see groups of wires coming up from the winding going up to the rectifier. The 105 amp will have a single wire going up and the 110 amp will have groups of two wires grouped together rising up from the stator winding to the rectifier. Taking one apart, we're going to start by finding the three bolts with the 516's head and remove them. Taking the pulley off, we're going to use a half inch impact, 15 16 socket, hold a rag around the pulley. Now we're going to want to take this lid off. Now we're looking at the inside of the alternator. Over here we have the rectifier where all the diodes are, rear bearing, and this is the voltage regulator brush holder assembly. See the three bolts holding them on? These three bolts are Torx head T20s. Those three there, T20. Take those three out. Then we're going to pull up straight up quickly so the brushes don't get stuck. Looking at this from the side, there is a gap right here. And this gap can be problematic removing the regulator or installing the regulator because the brush can tend to fall down into this area right here, this groove, and get stuck. If that happens, get a tool fashioned or something like that and stick it in beside underneath the brush and pry it back out because the brush will break off and then the voltage regulator will be no good. What we're inevitably going to be doing is changing and putting a new regulator on there anyway but during installation if you have any problems and the regulator has to come back off the brush tends to get stuck down in this hole and you just have to be careful and get a tool something like this, get in behind it and then pry it up because it's spring loaded. Here we're showing you the three voltage regulators on the right white with blue, black and gray with green which are updates of the regulators that are to their left. In other words when you take out a white with black you're going to be replacing it with a white with blue. When you take out a white with orange, you're going to be updating that with the black one. And when you take out a gray one, you're going to be updating that to the gray with green. Unfortunately, the way they're mounted in there, you can't tell if the green or the blue or the orange or the black is what you have. You have to take the alternator apart and turn the regulator over before you see what you got. We need to get the rectifier stator assembly out of the aluminum shell, the front plate. So we're going to hold on to it up here.
then the rotor comes out. What we're going to do is, we're going to remove a rectifier that looks like this. These silver things here, these are the stator leads, where the leads come up and solder into the rectifier. And we're going to be replacing them with a rectifier that has this style. These are called the drop down leads and they're an aftermarket design for ease of installation and we'll show you why. Here's the rectifier stator assembly and what we're going to be doing is using the stator over but putting a new rectifier in. So you get yourself a pair of side cuts, turn them upside down and cut up as close to the rectifier as you can get so that the wires or the wire is as long as you can possibly get it to be. There's six of them that need to be cut. I'll show you three. Now, all six of these leads have to be extremely clean before we can go on. If you got double leads, separate them out and clean them independently. You can scrape them with a knife. You can use a wire toothbrush to get them clean. You can use a piece of sandpaper. Or you can use a buffing wheel. But each individual one has to be very, very clean. All of the varnish and all of the paint has to come each has to come completely off of each one all the way around. And you have to see clean, fresh copper about the top inch to three quarters of an inch. You don't have to clean it way down into the bottom where it comes out. Just the top three quarters of an inch has to be clean. Then this is the part where you can wash the stator up, clean it, buff it off, get out any rust that's on the inside, and then spray paint it with a uh, rust resistant paint on the metal portions. Uh, you can spray the entire thing with a varnish or a red insulating paint before you go ahead and put the new rectifier on. Get all the leads as straight as you can and then set the rectifier straight down on it. Make sure that everything is lined up. The bottom of the rectifier needs to be lined up with the diameter of the stator. Then you take your thumb, push the lead back in as far as you can get it so that it's seated back into the groove and then crimp it shut. Go all the way around and do that. Push it back in with your thumb, push it back in with a screwdriver, and then hold it back in there while you crimp it. This has to be a pretty hard crimp. If you do it right, you shouldn't need to solder, but we always solder, and you need a 200 watt soldering gun to do that. What I'm going to do is take just a minute and go through with a pair of channel locks or a pair of pliers and crimp those extra good. And uh, this is more than 200 watts, but you can do it at home with a 200 watt. What you want to look for is you want to see a little tiny bit of solder coming out the bottom so that you know that the solders went all the way through. <laughs> 